This is episode 89 of the Magic Detective Podcast. On this episode, you'll hear some updates and news from the world of magic history. That and more on this episode of the Magic Detective Podcast. Hello and welcome to the Magic Detective Podcast, your podcast home for magic history. I'm your host, Dean Carnegie. I am the Magic Detective, and this is episode number 89. So it has been a little while since I have done a podcast episode, and um, it's been a kind of a difficult year. Uh, I've had a couple tragedies essentially take place, and um, they've been tough to navigate through. And then in the midst of that, a couple close friends passed away. One of them was uh, a magician that I know many of you are aware of, uh, Scott Alexander. And I I can't say Scott was a close friend, but he was a friend of mine. And uh, it's been tough coming to grips with uh, this because he was in my circle of, of friends, as I said. He was born Scott Grockey. He was a protege of Denny Haney's and certainly one of the ones carrying on Denny's legacy. Uh, Scott was the one who first wrote, the, the, frankly, the definitive biography of Denny. But this isn't about Denny. This is about Scott Alexander, who's, again, his real name was Scott Grockey. He was husband to wife Jenny, father to three wonderful kids, friend to countless magicians. He was a great performer. Incredibly talented, incredibly creative. Uh, He was apparently working a cruise ship when he had a stroke, and he was taken off the boat, if I understand, and they were caring for him, and then I guess he had a a massive stroke, and um, that's what what got him. Um, Scott was only 53 years old, and he had recently finished a book on his own creations titled Scott Alexander 52, and I had, I had seen somewhere online a few words that Scott had written. I guess he was kind of reflecting upon his own life and uh, reflecting upon the book he just finished. And, and basically, he said something to the effect that, that life is really short and we don't know how much time we'll have. And, and I don't have the exact quote, but that's essentially what he Said and uh, pretty shocking words concerning what happened, but at the same time, no truer words were spoken. Um, like I said, I didn't know uh, Scott was within my circle of friends. Well, I wasn't particularly close to Scott, but um, I kind of always hoped that we would. Uh, I'd get to know him better down the road. I'd had dinner with him and Jenny a few times. We hung out at Denny's back in the day. Um, even did a show together. He was he was closer to my friend Adam, um, but I always respected Scott and and would always um, um, always amazed at the new products and ideas and concepts that he came up with. Always really innovative. He called me one day out of the blue. And it was a it was a big surprise. He was working at the time. He was working on the Denny Haney book, and he had in his possession since the shop closed, Denny's shop. He had a painting that I had t- done for Denny, and uh, he called me to ask for permission to put it in the book. And I considered that such an honor, and was really beyond grateful uh, for that. Uh, Scott was one of the good guys. And um, he will be greatly missed. So I was listening to the last podcast, and um, <laughs> well, the last podcast I sounded a little unhinged. I thought at parts, and I guess considering everything that happened, it, it sort of makes sense. But the good news is, um, I, I'm I'm feeling pretty much like my old self, and getting back on track. Oddly enough, one of the things that's kept me from doing the podcast is uh, is work, is, is doing shows. I've had uh, several um, several weeks just booked solid of performances, and and um, they've been all over the place. So uh, been living out of hotels here seems like uh, constantly, but um, but I'm back home now for a little bit of a stretch. I guess I'm here until June. No, no, no. I'm I'm here until July because in June all my shows are um, 
in this area. So, uh, so that's a good thing. So, um, before we go any further, I thought I would announce this and it's a contest for the month of April. And this time I have a rather unique prize. I'm going to be giving away to the winner of the contest, the first magic detective t-shirt. And it's a black t-shirt with my logo in white, and they look really awesome. Uh, they will be for sale soon, believe it or not. And I know I've said that, like I said that for the first time two years ago, but I will get them up here soon. But uh, the great thing is the winner of this contest will get a t-shirt. So the only thing I ask is that if you are the winner, if you could take a photo of yourself wearing the uh, t-shirt and put it on social media and also mention the podcast. That would be awesome. So here is the magic history question for April. Who played the youngest version of Merlin in the musical Merlin on Broadway? This was from the show directed by Ivan Reitman. So it's a pretty easy question, even easier to Google. So because I've been away for so long, I'll give it about a week or so, and I'll take all of the correct answers, everybody that answered correctly. I'll draw one name out of a hat, and that winner gets a Magic Detective t-shirt. And um, so here's how you enter. Just send me an email, and the email address is info at carnegiemagic.com. That's info at carnegiemagic.com. Put um, April Magic Contest in the subject heading and then just put your answer to the question. If you want to put your t-shirt size in there as well, that's fine. But I'll be notifying you if you are the winner and getting all the uh, additional details that I need from you. So again, info at carnegiemagic.com. Just put um, April Magic Contest in the subject heading and put. don't forget to leave your answer in the body of the email and uh, we'll see best of luck to everybody. I hope, uh, I hope you win because obviously somebody's going to um, let's see one more thing before I go. Um, I've been putting a few items up for sale on eBay periodically. Um, they're all magic history related, or at least most of them are. So uh, if you want to go over to eBay and look up Carnegie Magic, it's just one word, Carnegie Magic. That's my account. Uh, it should come up, and you'll be able to see everything I'm offering. Uh, I'm clearing out some stuff to make room for more stuff, and I've got uh, doubles and triples of some items, and then uh, some things. I've just got one, but uh, head on over there and bid on an item or two, and I would appreciate that. Uh, next episode, if I can get permission... I'm going to share with you some details about a new magic museum that's in the works, as well as a very unique collection that I just recently saw that I didn't even know was available, but it's very, very cool. And uh, with any luck, I'll be back to regular features next, uh, next episode as well. So thank you all for being patient with me. All is good now back to normal, or as normal as can be. Until next time, I'm Dean Carnegie. I am the Magic Detective. Be well and stay safe.